AQA, A-level physics, classification of particles. So big chunk of the specification this, although most of it I have actually covered in other videos. Hopefully it's all starting to come together. There's a lot of information that you need to know and AQA is all about learning these little bits and pieces and remembering them. Uh, we'll get there. So what is everything made out of? Everything is made out of either fermions or bosons. Now, what's the difference between them? Well, fermions are proper particles. If you like, I imagine they have proper mass. Bosons are, we talked about in another video, exchange particles. So these are our force carriers. Remember the four forces. So we have photons, which carry the electromagnetic force. Uh, gluons you don't need to know about. Uh, w bosons you do need to know about. They're involved in the weak interaction. Uh, there's possibly gravitons there. And then there's this thing called a Higgs boson, which has been in the news. What do you need to know? You need to know photons, definitely for the electromagnetic force, virtual photons, and you need to know uh, W bosons for the weak interaction. So bosons are force carriers, you know, virtual particles, they appear and disappear. Are they really particles? I don't know. Now, fermions, there's two types of fermions. There are hadrons, which are heavy. Hadrons are heavy and leptons are light. Hadrons are heavy because they are made of quarks. And because they are made of quarks, they experience the strong nuclear force. So hadrons are heavy. They experience the strong nuclear force. Uh, some hadrons are made of three quarks, and they are the baryons. Now, the baryons we need to know. We need to know protons and neutrons. And we need to know antiproton and antineutron as well, because they're made of antiquarks. Then mesons are middleweight. Mesons are middleweight. They're made of two quarks. And the mesons that we need to know, we need to know kaons and we need to know pions. Okay. Kaons contain a strange quark and pions contain a, a quark and an antiquark. Anyway, hadrons are heavy. They're made of quarks. They feel the strong nuclear force. Leptons are light. They are light, so they don't feel the strong nuclear force. Uh, the electrons, sorry, the leptons you need to know, we need to know electrons. And the antiparticle of that is a positron. We need to know muons. Uh, we don't need to know tauons. I mean, they still exist, but you don't need to know them for some reason. And we have neutrinos as well. These tiny little neutral, very fast moving particles that fill up the universe, neutrinos. And there are electron neutrinos and there are muon neutrinos uh, and there are anti neutrinos as well. Every particle has an antiparticle. So this is basically getting towards what uh, physicists call the standard model, which is basically what everything is made out of. Now, quantum numbers. We know that certain things have to be concerned, conserved. So in all these interactions, th certain things have to stay the same. And they're called quantum numbers because they have integer values. They have definite values, like usually a whole number, and that whole number has to be the same. If we look at this, this is a decay of a, a neutron uh, in beta minus decay. Uh, the baryon number, so a neutron has a baryon number of one, and a proton has a baryon number of one, uh, stays the same. Okay, so baryon number stays the same. Lepton number, 
Well, on the left-hand side, there aren't any leptons, but a beta minus an electron has a lepton number of plus one because it's a particle. Uh, an antineutrino has a lepton number of minus one because it's an antiparticle. So my lepton number stays the same. Strangeness isn't involved in this reaction. There are no strange particles there. Charge, well, there's no charge. Ooh, let's go green. There's no charge on the left-hand side. Uh, the proton has a charge of plus one electron. Uh, the beta minus has a charge of minus one electron. So charge is conserved as well. So this idea of quantum numbers, there's a list of things which have to say the same amount on either side of the equation. Usually, nearly. I mean, there are some strange particles that don't do that. Uh, there's a few other bits and pieces I'm going to add in here. Muon decay. So a muon decays into an electron. So we're starting with this muon and muons decay into electrons. And there's also a couple of neutrinos involved. And there's a W minus boson involved. In the syllabus, it just says muons decay into electrons. OK, muons, there's lots of muons coming from outer space and they come into our atmosphere and they decay into electrons. Strange particles, what do we need to know? Uh, strange quarks have a much bigger mass than up and down quarks. Um, a strange quark has a strangeness of minus one. An anti-strange has a strangeness of one. Uh, kaons contain a strange particle. Um, strange particles are produced in pairs. OK, so that strangeness is conserved. So if you produce a strange, you produce an anti-strange at the same time. So when they are uh, produced, uh, strangeness is conserved and the strong force is involved. When strange particles decay, uh, the weak force is involved and strangeness is not conserved. So when they are produced, strangeness is conserved. When they decay, strangeness is not conserved, which is a bit strange, which is why they're called strange particles. OK, uh, this is an example. It's a K naught decays into a, a pi plus and a pi minus. Yeah, when strange particles, when kaons decay, it produces pions, either two or three pions, depending on the kaon.